For this video, I'm going to talk about um, the coefficient of static friction for a block on a ramp. And so the first thing we need to do is just draw our free body diagram. I'm just going to go ahead and draw this straight on my block. I have the force of gravity um, pointing downwards, the normal force, which acts perpendicular to the surface, and um, the force of friction that goes up the ramp. This is um, opposing the force of motion um, or the direction that it, the block wants to, wants to slide. Uh, all right, so here's my force of friction. And because this block is stationary, that means um, I have static friction. Now, if this was an actual experiment, um, in order to find the coefficient of static friction, or mu sub s, uh, we would need to do an experiment, and that experiment would involve taking that ramp and lifting it up, 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 until the block just begins to slide. That's going to be the maximum force of static friction. The instant before it slides, we'll have that maximum force. Um, and so we know that the force of static friction is less than or equal to mu sub s times the normal force, but if I have a maximum force of static friction, then fs max will be equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. All right, and so um, this is just like any other problem that you've done. We'll take our axes and we'll rotate them. Draw in our triangle where this red line is gonna be the force of gravity that acts parallel to the ramp. This is gonna be our angle theta, the angle of the ramp. And this green line, uh, this is the first time that this probably has come into play. Um, we actually are gonna care about the force of gravity perpendicular this time. All right, so um, I draw a picture, I draw my free body diagram, and then I need to sum my forces. I'm gonna sum the forces in the parallel to the ramp direction. I'm gonna call down the ramp positive just because if this were to accelerate, I want it to accelerate in the positive direction. So the force um, parallel, I get the force of friction in the negative direction. And let's just go ahead and call that Fs max, the force of static friction maximum. And then I get the force of gravity that goes um, in the positive direction. But it's not all the force of gravity. It's just this little bit that's in the parallel direction, Fg parallel. Using this triangle, I can look at my angle and look across and I can see, ah, well, Fg parallel, this is gonna be um, Fg sine theta. And so I can go ahead and substitute that in right here, um, Fg sine theta. All right, now, um, because this is stationary, this is not moving, um, I am in static equilibrium, which means the sum of the forces is equal to zero. So I can pull this to the other side. So I see that the maximum force of static friction is mg sine theta. Now, uh, that's sort of helpful, um, but if what I really wanna find is the coefficient of static friction, well, then I not need another equation. And I know that Fs max is given here. So I can just take this equation, um, let's call this one, and this equation two. I can set equation one equal to equation two. But that will give me, ah, now I have a mu sub s in there times the normal force is gonna equal mg sine theta. So we're almost there, but I need to know what is the normal force? And I know you're thinking to yourself, mm, self, that normal force is just uh, the force of gravity, mg. This is only the case if the, um, if it's just the normal force and the force of gravity and they're opposite each other. But for us, for the ramp, the normal force is going to be equal to the force of gravity parallel. So I'm gonna go ahead and just um, show that out here by summing the forces in the parallel direction. I get the normal force in the positive, I'm gonna call this direction positive, positive direction minus Fg perpendicular uh, in the negative uh, parallel direction, or perpen perpendicular direction. The sum of the forces is gonna be equal to zero. So the normal force uh, minus Fg perpendicular, well, we found Fg parallel is the sine 
Um, this is my adjacent side, so SOHCAHTOA, that will give me uh, force of gravity times the cosine of theta. Move this to the other side so I get the normal force is equal to, and I'm gonna go ahead and substitute force of gravity for mg, cosine theta. All right, now we're basically off to the races. So I'm gonna come back to equation three right here. I'm gonna highlight this guy. Because mu sub s, the coefficient of static friction, is just mg sine theta over the normal force. Just dividing across here. That gives me mg sine theta over mg cosine theta. The masses and the gravitational field strengths will cancel. Cosine, uh, sine over cosine will give you tangent. So for a box on a ramp, you can calculate the coefficient of static friction. That's mu sub s as the tangent of theta for a ramp. Now, um, this obviously is only the case for a box on a ramp, but it's a great experiment to do to find that coefficient. Um, if the box or the block begins to slide down the ramp, um, then you no longer have static friction, you have kinetic friction, and you have to take a few other things into account.